The Cork Modwave triggered our curiosity at the last Superboost. After a short demo and a quick chat with a product specialist, Cork Germany spontaneously offered us to try it out for some time in our studio. What we think of it and for whom it could be the right synthesizer is what we will try to find out in this video. the mod wave ticks all the boxes. Sorry, wrong channel. At first sight, the mod wave has quite a grown-up look despite its compact size. The 37 full-size keys make it look very compact. Neither the size of the keys nor the number and size of the connectors leave much to be desired. MIDI and audio are all adult size here. What I really like about the mod wave is its concept. It doesn't claim to be analog or vintage in any kind. But it refers proudly to the semi-digital Korg classics like the DW8000. Luckily, it's capable of doing much more than its predecessor. Also, it doesn't look vintage and comes with some clever Korg tech like the Kiosk physics. Great to see that. And then the ModWave is truly an honest guy who does not hide the fact that he's only a little computer in disguise of a synthesizer. So you could easily claim that it's nothing like a VST in a box. Well, let's see what it can do and for which kind of synth fool it might be the right choice. Beginners. At around 700 euro dollars, the ModWave comes at a relatively low price and is currently available at all major outlets. That makes it an attractive offer for beginners. So let's see how it fills the role as an entry-level suit. My first impression was that you have to navigate around a lot in the menus to really get to all the functions. There are also doubled assigned keys and a shift menu. And as soon as you move one of the numerous knobs, you end up in the corresponding function menu, which can also consist of several pages. This is confusing at first and takes a little bit of concentrated learning. But to drastically shorten this learning process, Cork offers an excellent editor app, which allows you to completely remote control the mod wave. This gives a much more structured overview of the sound architecture and is easy and efficient to use. So if you've ever edited a plugin with success, you won't fail with the ModWave. In addition, the app has a librarian, which can be used to save and archive your own sound creation. This also works simply and well. The ModWave also comes with an almost unbelievable number of over 2900 presets that first want to be hard. Many of these sounds are more like little soundtracks that often makes use of the wide range of modulation options. Because all sound parameters and their changes are directly displayed in the editor, you can easily do backwards engineering and see how the sounds were made. The next target group are old vintage snobs, like me. The ModWave was made palatable to me as a successor to the DW8000. This is a very special and unfortunately also misunderstood synth of its time, which can sound extremely fat. Basically, like a Poly 6 or Poly 61 with digital wavetable oscillators and analog filters. Its control concept did not make it a smash hit, as unfortunately with many manufacturers in this era, be it Akai, Roland or Yamaha, smooth plastic surfaces simply were the future. However, the engine of the ModWave is much more complex and versatile than the one of its ancestors. And if you do not really know how a DW8000 sounded, it's quite difficult to get appropriate sounds out of the massive number of 
parameters of the mod wave. Here I would have wished for a legacy sound bank, but maybe I just don't find it. In any case, it does the mod wave an injustice who simply regard it as a replacement or clone of the DW8000. If you are really after that, I recommend the outstanding plugin FB7999 from Full Bucket, which sounds amazingly good and is even for free. I leave a link in the description. Sound Explorers. If you like to fiddle around with complex soundscapes in order to use them live without your DAW, for example, the ModWave might also be interesting for you. After all, the ModWave is a pretty powerful 32 voice synthesis architecture, which makes it a kind of a multi tool for experimental sound designers. The synth structure. Presets are called performances and consist of two layered programs. One program has two oscillators per voice. In addition to over 200 wavetables with up to 64 waveforms, they also have a PCM sample storage of several gigabytes. In total, the ModWave holds up to 4 gigs of samples, which can be imported via a dedicated app. Additionally, there's a sub-oscillator in each voice. This gets very fat quickly. The oscillator sound then runs through the filter section, which holds a whole collection of filter models from the Poly6 to the MS20. In addition, there are four envelopes, five LFOs and two mod processors, as well as the modulation matrix. In the editor, the links of the parameters can be set very conveniently. Each program has an arpeggiator and a motion sequencer, which can also be used for rhythmic groove constructions. The program is rounded off by the solid sounding internal FX section. The two layers of the finished performance then run through a master reverb and EQ. Most exciting for live performers are the numerous controllers that the ModWave has to offer. Besides two classic wheels and four assignable knobs, the Chaos Physics Pad in the upper left is striking. This built-in mini Chaos Pad is for me without a doubt one of the highlights of this synthesizer. The combination of wiping and optical feedback is extremely entertaining and you can have practically all sound parameters modulated via this. The keyboard itself is nothing special and unfortunately has no aftertouch. This would also be my biggest criticism concerning the hardware. Unfortunately, such a flood of possibilities and editing options often doesn't lead me to a goal. And quickly you spend three hours messing around with the programming of the Chaos Physics, which was fun, of course. But if you don't have a problem with that and like to fiddle around with Eurorack, you shouldn't have any problems with that. I'm more of the type who doesn't really need memory locations on synths. Alternatives Hardware synthesizer with such a powerful synth generation are rare in this price range. I immediately spotted the ASM Hydra Synth Explorer and the Model 8 from Argen, which both shine with their wavetable synthesis. Unfortunately, I have not tried those two yet. As for plugins, I use them very rarely. But in this context, I have again played with Pigments from Arturia, which is also based on wavetables and is to me sonically first class. The free W8000 emulation FB7999 from Fall Bucket is a must anyway. As for vintage hardware, with a little luck, there is still a DW8000 available in this price range. Alternatively, I can spontaneously think of a Casio from the CZ series, like the 3000 or 5000, which I think had some sonic similarities. The Wine and Synth score for the Korg ModWave. Sound 16. 
great versatile synth engine, sound a little flat overall, most of the presets are difficult to match in the mix. Ease of use creativity, 18, easy to use, educational editor, entertaining chaos physics. DAW compatibility and MIDI, 18, no flaws. VST integration of the editor could be nice. Quality, 14, average Asian plastic with some metal made in Vietnam. Is this actually better than made in China or even worse? I did not went so far yet, sorry. Price fun ratio, 18, great. Cult factor and classical potential, 14. Mm. So, overall, this gives a wine and synth score of 16.33 for the Cork Mod Wave. And this is it for today. The only thing you now have to do is to leave a like under this video and to subscribe to this channel. See you in the next one. Peace.